What I'm going to talk about in this video is kind of interesting, but I'm going to say up front that you have to pay attention to everything that I'm showing and try to understand everything because you have to put things a little bit in perspective. Okay. And I know some people are not great at that, uh, but you know, we'll get through it if you, if you pay close attention to what I'm showing. So the question is, can you hear like how audible are panel vibrations in your speaker? You take your speaker, you know, set up on a stand and um, the sound obviously comes out of the front, right? But how much sound, because a lot of people make a big deal about this, how much sound is coming from the panels, like the side panel, the top panel, even the bottom panel where it's sitting on the stand? How much sound is coming from that? Well, it's very tricky to try to put a number on that. And it's very tricky to try to measure that. But I, I kind of came up with a way to kind of approximate it. And I'm going to show that in this video. The first thing I did was I set up one of my ELAC speakers on a stand right here. And I measured it with my microphone, my measurement microphone here. And that's about a meter away, like standard distance for measuring speakers. And that's what you're watching right now. And you can see the response is pretty good. It's nice and flat. That's a measurement of sound, the actual sound that's coming from the speaker and being picked up by this microphone. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to measure vibration. And to do that, I have an accelerometer. I'm going to put that on the side panel and this will tell me how much that panel is vibrating when I play that sweep again, the exact same sweep that I did with the recording with the microphone. I didn't change anything. Play it back again and you can watch that here. Now this is where I got to break in and point out the difference between this and this. The difference is not just that this picks up sound and this one picks up vibration. The other problem, the real big problem is that they can't, I can't calibrate them in any way. This microphone is calibrated for a certain SPL. So that'll give me a true SPL reading if I set my mic, uh, set it at the correct distance from the speaker and all that. But there's no comparison between these two. I have to actually boost this one up quite a bit so that my software REW will work with this. So that's the reason why it looks like it's quite a bit higher than the sound that I just measure when in actual fact, it, it simply cannot be right. We can look at the cone moving, how much that moves when you create the sound and compare that to the side of the uh, speaker. And you know that the side of the speaker is not moving as much as the cone. The data that I'm showing here now, you have to, like I have to figure out some way to offset it, to push it down and put it in its correct place. And I come up with a, a solution for that later, a kind of a solution, all right? And, and we'll see that then. But in the meantime, I got another idea and that was to take the accelerometer and put it on the wall right behind the speaker and get a reading on that, playing the exact same sweep again at the same volume and see what that gives me. And here you can see warning came up and this is what I was talking about, having to have enough volume for this thing to work properly with the software. The reading was a little bit low, but it still came through and you can see it here. So you can see if you compare the two, there's not a whole lot of difference between how much the speaker is vibrating and how much the wall is vibrating beside it. So even if you go to great lengths to do something, to your speaker to stop it from vibrating, you're still going to have the walls where the speaker is located to contend with. So now here is where it's supposed to start to get interesting. I bought uh, panel exciters. You may have seen these before. There's a very popular video showing the world's greatest speaker, which is a, a piece of insulation with one of these stuck on the back. Of course, it's definitely not the world's greatest speaker, but it's an interesting idea. And this thing will make something vibrate. So here I have the uh, accelerometer that will 
read or measure vibrations and that exciter will actually create them. So I had the idea that I would actually measure the panel vibrations and then I would excite the panel with this thing. I would stick it on the side of the speaker and adjust the output volume of the amplifier until I very closely matched what I had for that panel measurement. And then I would use that to actually excite the panel so you could hear what it's putting out. And it took a while to get the correct volume. I tried it, turned the amplifier down, tried it again, turned the amplifier down some more until I got it fairly close to what I had in the beginning. And here you can see both of them in the same chart. The blue trace is the measurement I got from exciting the panel to begin with, you know, when I did those first recordings. And the red trace is me trying to replicate that with the exciter so that I get the same output as I originally have with the, you know, by powering the speaker as I'm getting with the exciter when measured by the accelerometer. And this is a great example of why I said you have to pay attention. Uh, to see what I'm doing here and what I'm comparing. You know, these are two different things, but they're trying to be the same. And then I followed that up by letting that exciter excite the panel and see what that sounds like. And you can definitely hear that, but you have to keep in mind that this is at that level that hasn't been offset by the actual output of the driver compared to the panel, you know, this is way higher than it would normally be. And like I said, I'm going to get to the part where I show how I approximate that difference in a second. So this chart shows that measurement that I just did. I remember that this is a sound measurement, not a vibration measurement. This is how much sound was being picked up by the microphone while I was exciting the panel. And here it is compared to the full output of the speaker, the very first recording that I made. So next I took the exciter off the speaker and I put it on the wall to see what would happen there. And I did exactly the same measurement again. And remember that this is a sound recording, not a vibration recording. And you can see that it's very similar to what I was getting from the panel, except it's coming from the wall this time. And you're getting a, quite a bit more content down low. So if your speakers are putting out a lot of bass, your walls are going to be putting out a lot of bass. But like I said before, it's in relative terms. I haven't applied any offset to this yet. We don't, we don't, we know it's a lot lower. We know that it has to be okay. Just try to figure out how it is. And the only way that I could come up with was to take my accelerometer and put it directly on the cone of the woofer. But this time, instead of using REW to run a sweep, I'm using pink noise and playing that and I'm recording that with another program. And once again, I had to adjust the volume on the amplifier. This time I had to raise it up quite a bit so that I would have um, a loud enough signal when I take the accelerometer off the cone and put it on the side of the speaker to get a reading from the side of the speaker. What I'm doing here is I'm taking a section of that recording and I'm analyzing it to see the peak, uh, say volume. And I highlighted this with an arrow that's minus 9.7 dB. Then I moved the accelerometer to the side panel and I played the pink noise again. I know it looks like nothing, but if you look at the meter up at the top, the one that I have the yellow arrow pointing at, it's actually vibrations that is picking up from the accelerometer, but they are very low. So once again, I selected a sample of that recording and I plotted the spectrum to see how high that recording went. And you can see here it's minus 67 dB. So that kind of shows, cause I can't say for certain if this is hundred percent accurate, but it has to be somewhere ballparkish that there's almost a 60 decibel difference between what your, what's coming out of the speaker as far as the, um, the drivers go and what's coming out of the panel as far as them being excited by the sound that's in the speaker. Okay. 
Now, like I said, I can't be sure, but okay, if we you know, be conservative with it and say 40 decibels, 40 decibels in the difference, and we apply that offset to those two recordings I made with the exciter, then I can apply that offset to the exciter recordings and you can see that they are way down, way below the output of the speaker itself, and so is the wall. So I can apply that offset to the plots, but I can also apply it to the recordings that I made with the exciter attached to the side panel of the speaker and also the wall. Both of those, I can reduce the, the recording volume of both of those by 40 decibels, and that's what you're watching right now. So yeah, that's kind of a convoluted way to sort of, not really, maybe prove that the output from the side of your speaker is not that big of an issue, especially when you compare it to the wall. <laughs> and it depends on your wall too, because this wall, okay, uh, let me tell you about my wall. My wall is half inch drywall uh, that's screwed to two by six studs that are 16 inches apart. The wall is full of uh, fiberglass insulation, right? So it's not a it's not a really loose wall, in other words. So it depends on how your wall is constructed, especially an interior partition wall doesn't have any insulation in it. Maybe the studs are further apart, right? That's gonna vibrate even more. 